you know, certainly, you know, from our perspective as, a, as Comcast, we, we took that as a, we took a number of things, uh, especially on the DNS side, especially when, you know, a number of years ago with uh, the Kaminsky vulnerability and where we were when, you know, basically we had to forklift uh, all of our servers uh, within a matter of days in order to ensure that we didn't uh, expose ourselves to uh, potential spoofing and hijacking of our domain infrastructure. And, you know, obviously that drove us, uh, that, that was enough to, you know, cause us enough heartburn to push us into action. Um, you know, other folks uh, potentially didn't feel that or, or didn't experience anything and took a little longer and, you know, potentially put themselves uh, more at risk during that time. But I think at the end of the day, you know, technology is moving extremely fast. I think that you know we're still at a we're at a place now where you know the domain infrastructure still has you know potential gaps where you know folks are still running you know legacy versions of name servers and um, you know there's still a lot of potential for impact uh, inside of the network and certainly. Uh, network hijacking, as far as injecting routes and other functions, you know, while while there are functions in place to keep that from happening, certainly happens all the time. I, I can see it on the, you know a number of mailing lists, and people deal with it in an operations capacity, but it doesn't directly impact, I guess, you know, either you know businesses, you know, again, when it starts impacting the bottom line or has a, has the visibility to impact the bottom line for businesses, that's usually when they react. And I don't think we've had that, uh, that type of uh, incident or case where you've seen that business driver 